Texas presidential candidate Ted Cruz. Senator Cruz, thanks for joining us. Cliff, thank you for having me. It's great to be with you. Well, we are actually, we're in the car right now. We're riding to Tuscaloosa. you got a big event over in Tuscaloosa tonight speaking to the Republican Party there. And I've noticed all over the state as I've talked to people that your message is really resonating uh, in a great way, I think, with people all across uh, the South, but definitely here in Alabama. What do you think it is about your message that's resonating so much with folks here? Well, you know, I'm really encouraged. Uh, as you know, a couple of weeks ago, we did a bus tour all across the South, and we had multiple stops throughout the state of Alabama, and, and the energy and excitement we've seen has been incredible. And, and I think what's driving that is people are fed up. They're fed up with Washington, and, and they're fed up with, with what I call campaign conservatives, which is politicians that they talk real good on the campaign trail, but they haven't walked the walk. They say one thing and they do another. And, and, and I think folks are, are looking for someone who is a consistent conservative, who is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And I think the reason we're getting such energy and excitement is, is that in, in my entire time in public service, what I've tried to do every single day is number one, tell the truth, and number two, do what I said I would do, and and, and I think that's that's what people are looking for. Well, as we, you know, for, as a conservative, as I look at the current administration, one of the things that disturbs me the most is an absolute disregard for the rule of law. Now, what's going on yes. with Hillary Clinton right now? I think is actually a test of whether or not we are still a nation of laws. Because can you rise to that level and still be held to account when you do things wrong? When you look at an issue like immigration, it's the right. same way. Right. Now, here in Alabama, immigration is a big issue for us. Our, our Senator Jeff Sessions has really carried that torch in a lot of ways. Uh, talk to us a little bit about uh, perhaps the restoration of the rule of law broadly, but specifically with, with regard to immigration and a Cruz administration. What could we expect there? Uh, well, a a absolutely. Uh, you know, one of the most disturbing parts of the Obama administration is this has been the most lawless administration we've ever seen. We've never seen a president who ignores the law, disregards the law, tries to unilaterally change the law, and defies the Constitution. And, and, and it is a profound threat uh, to, to, to the liberty of every American. You know, you talked about Hillary Clinton and the Department of Justice. I mean, this is the most partisan, lawless Department of Justice. You know, both Jeff Sessions and I are, are alumni of, of, of the U.S. Department of Justice. And, and there is a long tradition at the Justice Department of being blind to party or ideology, of having your fidelity being to the laws and constitution of the United States. And, and that has been profoundly undermined on, under Barack Obama, and there's no area where it's been worse than immigration. You look at President Obama's unconstitutional executive amnesty, which he has twice purported to grant amnesty to millions of people directly contrary to law. Uh, I'll tell you, I've been proud to stand shoulder to shoulder with Jeff Sessions fighting against unconstitutional amnesty. And, and the sad reality is, there are far too many politicians in Washington, including far too many Republicans, who don't want to stop Obama's amnesty plan. I give you my word, if I'm elected president, the first thing I will do in office is rescind every single illegal and unconstitutional executive order President Obama has put into place. And when it comes to enforcing the border, this is a lawless administration that refuses to follow the laws. We will secure the border. If I'm elected president, we will enforce the law. We will put manpower. We will use the laws already on the books to, to build the fences, to build the walls, to increase the manpower, to put in place a strong E-Verify system, to simply follow the law. And we will also stop the Obama administration's indefensible practice of repeatedly releasing violent criminal illegal aliens. It is indefensible, it is wrong, and if I'm elected president, it will stop. Well, this leads me to probably my favorite question that I ask presidential candidates right now. I'm just going to openly admit I'm a, I'm a I, I, Jeff Sessions might as well put me on the payroll as his campaign manager for attorney general because talking about a guy who get at the head of the Justice Department and restore faith in the rule of law, uh, we think about that. Jeff Sessions at the top of the the Justice Department. Oh, I think Jeff Sessions would be extraordinary, to be honest, in a number of positions in a cabinet, and I think it would be a difficult choice 
uh, which would be the ideal place for him. I can tell you in my time in the Senate, there have been very few people I have worked more closely with than Jeff Sessions. He is someone who stands up and fights for conservative principles. He fights for Alabama. He fights for the rule of law. You know, when Chuck Schumer and Harry Reid and a bunch of establishment Republicans were pushing amnesty in 2013, a massive amnesty program, I was proud to stand and lead the fight to stop that amnesty program in Congress standing shoulder to shoulder with Jeff Sessions. And, you know, it was striking. A couple of weeks ago, we had a debate in Cleveland. And when it comes campaign time, everyone talks a good game like they're a conservative. So on that stage, everyone says they oppose amnesty. And yet a majority of those candidates on that stage have publicly and repeatedly supported and advocated for amnesty. And I was the only person on that stage that has always opposed amnesty and that stood and led the fight alongside Jeff Sessions to defeat amnesty in Congress. And when that fight was happening, those other candidates on that stage were nowhere to be found. I'm talking to Senator Ted Cruz right now on the way over to Tuscaloosa for a Republican Party meeting over there tonight where he's going to be speaking. Uh, Senator, I want to talk to you a little bit about some other issues I think are particularly important to folks here in Alabama. One of those is uh, our faith. I mean, whether sure. it's culturally or just our day-to-day -day lives here in Alabama, our faith is a, an important part of who we are here. Um, talk to us a little bit about a couple of things. Number one, I would love to hear the role that faith plays in your day-to-day -day life. Sure. Secondly, when talking about uh, religious liberty, right. as I look at the Supreme Court's ruling on same-sex marriage, uh, it horrifies me, the yes. religious liberty implications of that. Could you talk to us about those two things a little? Well, sure. In, in, in my life... I'm a Christian first, and then a conservative, and then a Republican, and very much in that order. Uh, my faith is integral to who I am and, and to my family. And, and you know, when, when I look at the role of faith, uh, I, I actually think back to when I was a very small boy. Uh, when I was three years old, neither of my parents were Christians, and both of them were drinking far too much. And my father left us. My father left my mom, left me. He decided he didn't want to be married. And he didn't want to be a father to a young boy anymore. And he came down to Houston. My mom and I were up in Calgary. They were in the oil business. And after several months, a colleague of my father's from, from the oil business invited him to a Bible study. Uh, and he went to the Bible study. And then he went back the next week. And he ended up staying late into the night, arguing with a pastor, a pastor named Galen Wiley, who was the pastor of Clay Road Baptist Church, and stayed until late in the night. My father was convinced he knew better, he didn't need God. And late at night as they were arguing, the final question, he asked the pastor, he said, okay, what about the man in Tibet who's never heard of Jesus? What about him? And Pastor Wiley, very wisely, didn't take the bait. He didn't argue that issue. And he just said, Raphael, I don't know about the man in Tibet, but you've heard of Jesus. What's your excuse? And that, my dad told me, just hit him like a, a ton of bricks. Yeah. And, and he fell to his knees from the chair he was sitting in, and he gave his life to Jesus. And, and it, it turned his life around. He drove to the airport. He bought an airplane ticket. And, and he flew back back to Calgary and back to my mother and me. And, and so when people ask, is faith real? Is Jesus real? I can tell you if it were not for the redemptive love of Jesus Christ, I would have been raised by a single mom without my dad in the house. And, and that, that had an incredible impact on my family as it so happened just a couple of weeks ago on that same Southern bus tour we were talking about a minute ago, when we were traveling through Tennessee, that same pastor that led my father to Christ, Galen Wiley, he's now retired and living in Tennessee, and he, he showed up. And, and Brother Wiley, when I was eight, he baptized me when I became a Christian. I gave my life to Jesus when I was eight, and Brother Wiley baptized me. But I hadn't seen him probably since I was about 10 years old. It's been, you know, 34, 35 years since I've seen him. 
and it was it was a powerful powerful moment to to see him again and just to embrace and hug him and thank him that's a great story for sharing yeah. the good news that's awesome we got a couple more minutes here with you. Uh, I want to step back more 30,000 foot view here. Just talk about the race as a whole. You know, it's been sure. uh, quite a ride so far, yeah. uh, even in just a couple of months. Uh, the Trump tsunami has kind of it's definitely made things interesting. But I think you step back from that, and, and just as a conservative, I say this is the best field of candidates that we've had in a long, long time. Absolutely. Uh, with all these guys in, in the race, what do you think it is about – you're, you right. that that separates you from everybody else that's in the race right now. Well, you are exactly right. We have a very talented field of candidates that are young and dynamic and inspirational. Um, I, I do think there are sharp differences. And if you look at the last debate, uh, coming out of the debate, um, what we saw was enormous momentum and energy for our campaign. In the 100 hours that followed the debate, we had $1.1 million contributed to our campaign as people went to tedcruz.org, contributed, signed up, volunteered. The bus tour we did through the South, we started in South Carolina, we went to Georgia, went to Alabama, Tennessee, Mississippi, Arkansas, Oklahoma. Standing room only crowds everywhere we went. Had over 19,000 people coming out to the bus tour. And, and I think the biggest difference, there are a lot of good people in the race who, who I like and respect, but the biggest difference is that I'm the one candidate that has a proven record as a consistent conservative over and over and over again. If we're going to win, we have to stand on all three legs of the proverbial Republican stool. We've got to run as a fiscal conservative, a social conservative, a national security conservative. And there's no other candidate on that stage that has a proven record. You know, if you think, Cliff, of the, let's say, dozen biggest fights the last several years, the test that I think primary voters are applying is they're asking which of these candidates have stood and led, whether it's leading the fight to stop Obamacare or leading the fight to stop President Obama's unconstitutional executive amnesty or leading the fight to turn around our debt and stop our ever rising debt ceiling or standing up to defend religious liberty and free speech or standing up to defend the Second Amendment and leading the fight against Harry Reid and Barack Obama's efforts to strip away our right to keep and bear arms, or, or leading the fight to protect our privacy, or to stop Common Core and defend the Tenth Amendment, or leading the fight to strengthen our friendship and alliance with Israel, or to stand up and stop ISIS and radical Islamic terrorism, and to do everything possible to stop this catastrophic Iranian nuclear deal. On every one of those, I think there is a stark difference between me and the other candidates in that my record is consistently, day in, day out, honoring the commitments I made to the men and women who elected me to stand and fight for conservative principles, to fight for the Constitution, and to fight for our freedom. And I'll make this promise right now. If I'm elected president, I'm going to do exactly what I said I would do, defend the Constitution and restore this great nation. Well, Senator Cruz, we appreciate you taking the time to talk to us today. I know it means a lot to me personally, but to my audience that here in Alabama, you've taken the time to come here multiple times and, and talk to us. It, it means a lot, and we're going to remember it on Election Day. So thank you again. Thank you very much.